Hello everyone, my name is Romat and today we're doing part 1 of a series of in-depth Talia discussion. This episode features lane-faced Talia and it is my first video for the ones that I have planned that will try to be of improved quality both visually and educationally. I realized that some people here are no longer Tilia beginners and as you've been with me since I started this channel, I should definitely make some more useful videos for the mid to advanced Tilia players as well. Again, I try to aim for higher quality, but if I fail this I am terribly sorry. Before we go into the video, I also want to say that I plan on doing an unranked to master on Europe Nordic and East and this time I'm pretty sure I'll hit it without much problems, unless Talia gets nerfed again. Again, uh, we don't want that. <laughs> I've leveled a fresh matchmaking rating account and I'm close to level 30 on it, it's, you're going to see it in this clip, and we'll start those videos soon as soon as I'm 30 and as soon as the season starts. I will also reduce the length of the videos as I don't want to waste your time for no reason. I don't really care about getting money from this channel or anything so the, there has there is no reason for the videos to be long. Sometimes I even remove ads but I just like to have some beer money so don't please don't judge me. Please don't judge me. So this clip, this video is against any champion. So we're not talking specifically against Z, against yes or no. No, we're going to do all champions, basically as in just general rules, okay? So you don't care about the fact that you're against someone specific. So the advice will be, again, general and uh, we're going to work on that. Uh, this being said, we're gonna jump straight into a replay or two or three and we're going to point out some of the most important stuff for the lane phase. How do I define the lane phase? Well, the lane phase usually starts at level 1 and ends when either you hit level 8, 9 or 10 or when the mid tower falls for either side or when other major objectives are down on the map such as tier 2 tower maybe or when people start to do big 5 versus 5 team fights usually the lane phase is over. I will present my rules in order of importance for the lane phase and I will argue about each and every one. And before I start, consider this auxiliary rule. It's about vision control, so I will do 5 rules and always keep in mind the auxiliary rule, imagine an A, and this rule is about vision, maintain it every time while simultaneously focusing on all other rules or points. Get vision words, use them on the bush near Drake in the river as it is one of the strongest and sometimes uh, worth even the Drake pit if needed. If you're against Warwick, Lee, Master Yi and champions like that, do that. So word the Drake bit and put the vision word in the bush nearby. You know what bush I'm talking about. Now, Drakes are extremely important, so that's that's why I'm saying this. Herald could work too if you have vision control there and your support is a god, but focus on those Drakes. Always use pink word uh, or control word before you enter the lane. So if there are no creeps crashing your tower, try to put the vision word in a spot that you like before the enemy sees that you have it in your inventory. And try to be discreet about the ping ward location if you can. Sometimes put it more defensively if you notice they kill it often. And aim for at least 3 words, 3 vision words per game to control words. They are life changer and obviously buy them after you buy item parts or complete items. Now vision is one of the most important things in League of Legends and that's why I argue so much that this is an auxiliary rule that you have to consider at all times. Maybe you can say this is the most important rule, but I like to say this is an auxiliary rule that's near by the all five rules that I'm going to present in order of importance. Okay? So now, on the screen, the five rules besides this auxiliary rule uh, are survival, in order of importance, remember. So first is survival. Second is help your jungler. Third is keep in mind experience and CS. Four, keep in mind to roam and roaming in general. And five is fighting don't fight okay so about five we're going to go in depth on that one is the biggest one and now we're going to after i presented them we're going to go in depth on each and every one 
The first rule, survival, don't die at all costs, don't stay for no reason on lane when the mid laner is about to hit 6, don't stay too close to the middle of the lane or their tower. If the enemy has a Xinzao or Jarva 4, Twitch or any champion that likes to gank at level 2, 3, 4, don't, don't stay that aggressive. Don't go aggressive when you've got no idea where their jungler is unless you actively track him through words or map camps or logistics such as he was bought and he still has no time to reach mid and stuff like that. That's the first rule, survival. The second rule, help your jungler and synergize with him but don't lose too much XP over it as in don't offer follow, don't follow him to his death, don't overextend unless their mid does too. Analyze before the game if you win the 2 vs 2. You should win most 2 vs 2 fights unless you have an Ivern or some 0 CC champ and you miss your W. You're going to lose if you miss your W most of the time but you gotta, you gotta focus on that. Okay? It's all about setup. If you can't hit your W, play with exhaust till you get it, practice in practice tool, do that thing. Ignite usually works but against level 6 all inners exhaust is also good. If you don't win the 2 vs 2, then now fighting. Now fucking fighting. Now fighting. No fucking fighting! Seriously. The third rule, experience and CS. Notice I put experience first because if you're level 4 and their Zedar Akali is 6, you're doomed. This is the third most important point because you want to be on at least the same level as the enemy mid laner or above him. So don't roam when there is 20 CS, a 20 CS wave into your tower and, myself included, last hit the damn cannons. Try to keep the lane CS in the middle or slightly push towards your tower if you don't intend to fight. The fourth rule, roaming, is after all the above. So first you consider the first rule, the second rule, the third rule and so on every time you prioritize the first rules and then you prioritize this one and so on. Best roam is when you go with your jungler as you can create a 4 vs 2 or a 4 vs 3 scenario. Don't roam blindly if their jungler can solo you or if their mid assassin can kill you. Careful towards bushes, use vision control to your advantage and don't roam when, it's not, when it is not necessary. So if you have a shit ton of CS in the mid lane, please. Please take that CS, take your CS, focus on the CS and experience because that rule is above this. Learn to spot the good roams and differentiate them from the bad roams. If you lose a lot of experience or CS from roaming and their mid is gaining advantage, you are doing it wrong. Roaming works because uh, if, if you get at least a double kill and so on or a tower, you're going to get advantage. So, it works best for a 2 versus 2 with your jungler, a first tower, minimum 2 kill advantage or when you have full control of the wave and you pushed it into the enemy tower. So you don't roam every time you see someone being on lane, okay? You roam when you're a bit certain at least that something good is going to happen towards your team, especially from the list that I have just mentioned. So don't roam blindly. Okay, so the fourth rule basically says this roam smart. Now the fifth rule, the biggest one, fighting the enemy mid. This is the last point and I say usually no fighting because most Leah players just die randomly against most champions so I'm trying to advise them to not do that. So uh, This is the last point because Talia is no longer capable or that capable of killing 1 versus 1 the enemy champion. If he is the skill, the same skill level, okay, if you're a smurf or do destroy the enemy mid laner 1 versus 1 but most of the time you know it's going to be harder. So, sure with ganks it can work, but we're solely talking about 1 versus 1 here. Your main goal shouldn't be this, unless there's a skill difference between you and him as I said, and you are 150% sure that you're going to win. Remember, if you lose this fight, this 1 versus 1 fight that I'm talking about at the 5th point, you're going to destroy the stability of the all points that I've mentioned before. All of the points are going to be nullified. I've put them in this order because you'd want first to survive the, and win the 2 versus 2. You're going to want to have good experiences yes, and you're going to do good roams for Drex and First Tower and such. While also, actually I will remember keeping vision in check. While you can win the 1 versus 1, this shouldn't be your main focus because more often than not when you fight 1 versus 1 you push and when you push you open yourself to their jungler and a lot of players tend to die at this, at this moment, at this scenario. I'm not saying to ignore the low HP Cassidy and never go for the kill. I'm not saying I'm not saying that. I'm saying just to be more careful than usual. I'm saying that 
in the standard Yasuo, Zed, Akri, Talon and so on matchups, the most common matchups you shouldn't care too much about killing the enemy because there wouldn't be likely a chance to do so. Because most of the time you're going to lose, especially if, it, if you're on OTP and you're against an OTP, it's going to be hard, especially if you don't have exhaust or you have exhaust but you're not going to really win 1 vs 1 if he's smart about it and engages when he has all cooldowns and does his thing. Now you can outplay him by different means, you can hit a W eco combo, but if he flashes it you're most probably dead or dodges it with the spell. So you gotta be careful, this is pessimistic, but pessimistic is good against those assassins because Talia is not made for 1 vs 1, it's made to roam and to gain advantage elsewhere or to win 2 vs 2 with the help of some CC. Now, again, you gotta consider your options. Obviously against Cassidy and such, the level 6 you can you can try to fight him, but in rest you should be careful. Keep in mind the vision at all costs. The actual rule, rule is maybe the most important, but again it's at the same time with the rest. If you do good vision, in general you're going to notice that you're going to do better because you have so much more information to talk about. And information usually translates into macro because, well, macro is everything that happens on the map and if you can see it then you can act on it and that may be a bit too far on this chapter as i did not intend to go this far anyway these are my rules in order of importance focus on them practice them remember them even write them down if needed and do as i say because it will eventually work that's how I learned to play, that's how you will probably learn to play as well. And if you want to learn Talia, I don't know if there are other resources that talk this in depth, maybe some pro players, but it's kind of hard to understand what someone does if someone is not explaining to you. Learn to see us better, obviously, in the practice tool if you have to, and focus on all five rules plus vision control. I'm Drumat, and I really hope this video had a bigger impact than the last one, and I'm here to thank you for every second of the video that you've watched so see you next time guys and goodbye